Hello everyone, my name is John from American Eagle Plumbing. Today we're going to be replacing a pressure reducing valve. Here in Texas, the pressure reducing valves are found in the front of the property and they're, t they're buried. And so what we need to do to replace that is we're going to be digging this area up and we need to expose that so we can remove the old one which looks like this and we're going to go ahead and replace it. All right, so when we dig this up, we got to make sure we got to make sure that we dig it up enough so that we can unspin the whole unit uh, for complete removal. So the next step in this process is we're going to be cutting all this out, and we got to replumb it so we can position our pressure reducing valve in this space. Uh, we're going to be installing a new shutoff valve and then repiping all this so we can get our pressure reduced. So we're getting ready to glue the first 90 on to redirect so we can uh, install the pressure reducing valve. We're going to be installing a new shutoff valve for the whole system and then a pressure reducing valve. Whenever you work on any kind of water system and you have to cut into the line, make sure you go and shut the water off. When the water meter is found in the front of the yard and a lot of times we use a tool like this, it has a notched uh, end and you stick that on the city curb, curbside and there is a two holes. Most water meters have two holes and that's when you know your water system is off when those two are lined up or, or it stops and then go and shut up, turn a faucet on and make sure that you've bled the system down so when you cut into the system, there's no surprises. The next step of this process is to replace or install a five gallon, in this case, uh, extension tank. And the reason why we put this expansion tank in is because it absorbs the expansion and contraction or the thermal expansion of the water when it's heated. A lot of people do not do this. What they do is they just will install this tank and leave it because they do come pre-charged with air. So half of this tank here has air and half of it has it's a rubber bladder. So when the water gets turned on, the water will go in through here, through this cap, uh, through these threads and it'll fill up that bladder. And it's very important that you balance it by putting in the same pressure, same incoming pressure of water. So for example, if you have 70 PSI coming into the home, you're gonna to wanna to put 70 PSI of air. So you have an equal amount of air pushing against an equal amount of water on the other side. If that doesn't happen, you have uh, what's behind me, the tank is waterlogged and it's, the bladder inside here has ruptured and it's filled up this entire tank with water and it's become completely worthless. So we are going to remove this tank behind me. We're going to put in the proper amount of air into this tank and then we're going to reinstall this tank. What I use to put air into these tanks is just a simple bicycle pump and use a pressure gauge, a tire pressure gauge. It's right here. And this has, in this particular instance, we're going to use 70 PSI, so this tire pressure gauge goes up to 70 PSI. So we're going to, this uh, pressure tank comes pre-charged at 40 PSI, so we're going to add 30 pounds of air to it. Alright, so now I got the proper air mount. I went and pushed my little air gauge, and as you can see, it's 70 PSI, and that's exactly where we want it. Next step is to remove the expansion tank. Usually use two opposing wrenches so you don't uh, break or kink the copper. So we're going to go ahead and remove this old expansion tank and get it to a point where you can hand spin it. And there's a little support right here so we'll take this out. It's completely full of water. And I also have a support against the wall which is helpful in the event that these tanks do go bad. So get this one up and out of the way. Now that we have the expansion tank installed, all we have left is to turn the water on and adjust the water pressure. By code, you need water pressure that's 80 PSI or less. And the reason for that is because 80 PSI or greater can cause harm or damage to your water piping or your fixtures. So it's very important that you have the proper working pressure in your home. I kind of liken it to having high blood pressure in your body. So having good, uh, accountable water pressure in your home system. But just keep your home maintained and working and fixtures working longer.